The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. Let's uh, see what we have going on here other than we're here at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. And 3 p.m. So what do we have? Well, on the day uh, up 175 points on the S&P cash. Yesterday when we uh, left, uh, there were about a thousand rumors, and it looks to me like uh, they were really pushing uh, the uh, market uh, lower, probably so that they could buy. Also uh, to try to get as many people short as possible uh, to get the biggest pop as possible. So we've got uh, a market that uh, eh, at least uh, a little hinky, if not a lot. Um, when we go back and look through history, these big, huge days uh, generally happen in bear markets. Someone posted a chart of it earlier. Uh, but one of the reasons why I always say uh, that uh, you only want to be short the market at about 25 percent, uh, hanging around uh, for the long term, uh, short takes a lot of guts and uh, probably the patience that uh, you have to look three months, six months down the line before you even think of uh, covering. And that's very tough for short uh, sellers. Uh, they tend to be uh, 10 times more likely uh, to trade in a day, a short trader. Uh, and so you, you find people that don't have a lot of risk tolerance, which is probably good to stay in the business. Uh, but it's bad to uh, get in a war uh, on uh, short positions, and that's it. But uh, eh, I do digress. 877-927-6648, probably the most important chart today is of the bond market. want to thank uh, to... to, to I'll get his name here in a second. Uh, to, 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 and we have it here. Uh, Gary, U.S. Bonds is in here. Um, and looking at the TLT, uh, we talk a lot about the Joe DiNapoli double repo pattern. And we pretty much have it. Um, I counted the, the uh, bars before. And you had, uh, going back to the 5th of October, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 days below the 3x3 three three or the 9-day. It probably wouldn't matter much. Handful of days above it, handful of days below it. The next little pop above it is generally a big deal. That is a bottoming signal. Now, do I think it goes right back up to the top? No. Uh, but we've uh, talked a while that this could bounce back up to the 101, 102 area where we have a gap up from the 28th of September and a gap down from the 7th of October. Uh, that's right at about that 101, just a little, probably 101 and a quarter. So uh, what else can we do here? We can say that maybe there's something else going on in the market. Uh, maybe a lot of people are anticipating once again something that the Fed is going to do. Uh, the Fed's kind of made it fairly clear that they're not letting off the pedal. And that's the brake pedal, not the accelerator for you guys in Lutz. So um, is a lot going to happen in the short term? Probably not. Uh, far too many people probably thinking that this is where they should short. Those folks are going to have to probably either sit on their hands and sweat a lot over the weekend. But, uh, you know, it's not uncommon to see even uh, Thursday rallies like this continue, maybe even just a little bit into Friday's close. We're going to have very light volume tomorrow because the bond market's closed. That is problematic for the short sellers, too, because uh, the old saying is do not be short a quiet market. 
it will not be easy to get out. They almost always uh, let you take at least three days. Now, I don't think a lot of retail traders were short, but I have a feeling a lot of big street guys trying to make up for a bad year could have been, and that's what we might have seen this trap laid for us uh, into this day. And again, you see, or at least I see, that many rumors flying around. It always makes me uh, a little if uh, worried. But, uh, you know, unless you uh, were there and clicked in the first probably 10 seconds uh, after the CPI numbers, uh, very narrow window to get in, probably a lot bigger window to get out. Now, of course, we look at the volume, and we're, we're going to have some fairly decent volume today. We're doing about seven, uh, excuse me, 9.5 billion shares as we start the show off. And well, I don't know if there's a whole lot you can say other than that, um, but we're going to get to the rest of it. Let's do a little history. Oh, I just lost my Discord app. Okay. Hopefully we're still on. I'll try to get back in here. Maybe somebody can tell me. Post chat. Uh, are we still on the air? We've got about two minutes here. I'll just assume we are. Anyway. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And on this day, in 2001, Apple shipped the first iPad, or excuse me, the iPod, the device that changed the course of both music and technology industries. Of course, at the time, most experts could only focus on the fact that other devices cost less and may have had more impressive technical specs, uh, sort of like they do today. Of course, it was heavily marketed uh, to uh, some easily influenceable people. Uh, and of course, if you don't know the story, we'll give you the rest of the story. Uh, it goes back to about 1980, 1981. Um, uh, Jobs had sent some folks out. He wanted to know exactly how to market stuff. So he sent people out to investigate how all the kind of stuff uh, that people talk about today, uh, how do you influence people. He went back to the uh, uh, to uh, Nazi Germany. He had a, he did he spent a lot of money sending researchers out to find out how to influence people on a mass scale. Uh, the guy that he actually had do that is a guy named Guy Kawasaki. If you want to read how to manipulate people on a magna at a um, mag not magnificent uh, a magnitudal, I'll use that word level. Uh, you want to take a look at that, but uh, that's kind of the idea that you can't leave any kind of truth sit by itself. You got to uh, always kind of uh, color it and shape it and put your spin on it, but. Uh, it's kind of lacking the last few years from Apple. We'll be back in a minute. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. And we're back. Uh, up. Uh Four point, almost 4.7 percent on the S&P, up six and a quarter percent on the Nasdaq, Dow 30, um, up three uh, percent. Russell up five and a half percent. Crude, uh, 1.35 percent, and uh, gold up uh, 2.4 percent. So uh, we've got a lot of cross currents uh, in the market. And it's kind of hard to tell exactly which ones are correct. We talked about the TLT. That is a big signal in the bond market. Generally, just the opposite of a signal when uh, everybody's uh, getting into bonds, they're headed for safety. Uh, we talked a great deal about how much money was going in the big stocks of the Dow over the last few weeks. Uh, looks a little bit uh, wider out here today. But uh, you've got an awful big move, you've got some decent volume, but it may be a little light of volume for such a big move, but uh, we shall see. Uh, to, to, could you look at the UUP? Okay, so we'll look at that. Uh, that's for Pete. Uh, dollar index bullish fund, you got the big gap down here today, got a lot of volume. Um, there's always this day back here on the 12th of September uh, that was a little reversal day at the time. My guess is that's where support comes in. Uh, the close on that day was 29.04. What do we have right now? 29.19. The low of the day was 29.12. So you're pretty much into that little doji day back here. Uh, that didn't have much in the way of volume. That was kind of a head fake. Um, on that day, you had about 3.6 million shares. Uh, you got about 7.5 million shares, excuse me, 7.75 million shares today on the uh, uh, U.S. dollar index. So uh, sh we shall see. There's probably a few things going on that we are unaware of, but will be. Uh, generally, that news follows uh, the action of the market a few days behind. 
Uh, but that uh, would be it. Okay. Got a bunch of questions here about uh, uh, Bitcoin. I don't have a whole lot other to say, but uh, I enjoyed uh, a great deal of what we have heard over the years. And I remember even five, six years ago, uh, the amount of hate mail that playing this uh, actually generated. What's Bitcoin? It's a new online currency that's been developed. Uh, it's just like actual money, except you can't see it, hold it, or spend it on anything. You don't have to buy Bitcoin. You can mine it. Mine it? Like mining gold? Yeah, sort of. There's a limited amount, and we find it not by tunneling into the earth, but by using a computer to solve complex mathematical problems. So let me get this straight. We have to write an elaborate program in order to find a fake coin that we can't spend on anything? Yes. That sounds fun. Yes, it does. It was fun while it lasted, but uh, I think everybody's starting to figure out uh, that it is time to head for the hills. But uh, I do digress. I do still enjoy uh, Leonard and uh, Sheldon's discussions about Bitcoin all those many years ago. <laughs> okay, other things going on. Well, um, we talked about NVIDIA having uh, a monstrously high uh, short, about 40% short position uh, on a daily basis, maybe even 42%. And I was kind of surprised that we even got a little bit of a pullback yesterday. Uh, but, of course, everybody had to pile back on, only to get squeezed out today. Um, you did go right through this gap lower. That gap lower uh, had 100 and let's call it 118 million shares on the 1st of September. Uh, we're going through with about 46 million shares. So I'm starting to see kind of a uh, theme even on a big day for the market. And that is uh, some of these bigger road signs out here are being flagrantly uh, sped by uh, without the requisite uh, volume. But uh, we'll see. Maybe that volume comes in the next couple of days. Uh, I'm always reticent of uh, light volume pushes higher, especially when I still suspect we're kind of in a bear market. I don't see anything that actually says that we're out of that for a while. You can certainly uh, call me, by the way, at 877-927-6648 and send additional emails to me at path at tfnn.com. Okay, to, to, to uh, see what else. Okay. Let's take a quick look at AMD. We'll go through the usual suspects. Oh, what a great movie that was. Uh, to, to, and then we have a question for Disney, Waiting in the Wings, so we'll look at it here. Uh, to, 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 you had a big gap higher, move higher. Uh, in advanced micro today, kind of the same thing. You had these big gaps lower. Uh, on the case of AMD, it was on the 7th of October. That came down with 164 million shares. Uh, we're up uh, on, well, let's call it just shy 80 uh, million shares right now. So is this kind of stuff that you look for in bear markets? I think the answer is yes, if you want to go short. Um, now, the difference is almost always you're going to be three hours early going short, three days uh, going short, early short, or three weeks going short. So if we don't see probably something significantly lower by Monday or Tuesday next week, uh, the reality is that we might have to be into uh, the first couple of weeks of December before we see any meaningful pullback. But... We've got to get some time for a lot of these folks to get out of the way and to cover their short positions if we think the market's going to go lower. If they remain short, uh, they'll just continue to turn the old heat up. And we are cooking with gas on those. Uh, let's see what else we have. Okay. Uh, oh, question on Disney. I didn't cover the big move lower. Uh, the day before, I did talk about a lot of the write-offs uh, that these guys are having, and they're going to probably throw the the uh, 200 million or 300 million they were spending on uh, Indiana Jones into the trash can. 
there are, I hear, uh, especially if you read some of the uh, inside Hollywood rags, I still do after all these years, even though I've been really out of the business for 20. Uh, and uh, our company's been gone that long, part of Harris now, uh, or back then. But uh, certainly it is uh, a huge move lower yesterday. Had a lot of other stuff on my mind. But, uh, you know, a little bit of a pre-announcement. But I I continue to think that a lot of these companies, take a quick look at Netflix. I was trying to find a good movie uh, that kind of grabbed me from the beginning. I had a real problem last night. Um, anyway, we'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we come back, uh, we're watching the markets kind of closely. I'm not expecting a lot. Uh, probably the most interesting thing is the option market makers are still thinking uh, much lower uh, for options expiration on the 18th. So is this just a way to get out of a lot of shares? Well, the stock market has been a great uh, vehicle for those that uh, can move the markets. Uh, Jesse Livermore called them stock operators. And a lot of people say, well, you know, how did all these people get together? Uh, I kind of think of it. I probably should have played it. But there's a great uh, dialogue uh, with a comedian who uh, says, you know, uh, these people all went to the same schools. They all do the same things. They know what's good for them. 
Uh, he's talking about politically and, and choices, but I think it kind of applies to a lot of big groups. They, they know what's good for them. And what's good for them is to really push market up uh, so they can distribute stocks, or maybe they think it's going a lot higher. I, I'm a little bit jaded, so I tend to think um, the, uh, uh, the least charitable to the guys on Wall Street. Uh, but uh, we shall see. Anyway, options not doing much of anything. Uh, and generally, as we've talked about in the past, uh, you may get a few days of this stuff. But generally, the option market makers are right. Now, maybe when we close today, I'll see a lot more. Uh, but uh, that's it. And again, bond market closed tomorrow. Can't stress that enough. That means almost always the volume is 25 or 30 percent lower. Uh, in the equities, and uh, of course, the bond market is about, uh, as far as dollar amount, is about 10 times the size of the equity market. So let's take a look. Anyway, we're talking about Disney, and even before it uh, was gutted like a fish, uh, it uh, on its uh, announcement, uh, Netflix actually is kind of acting like it should. It gapped higher on decent volume of about 46.7 million shares. It came back with a light volume of about 8 million shares into the low on November 7th. Today, though, not a whole lot of <clears throat> volume. Now, could it just go back up and retest the top or something? It could, but it doesn't look nearly as bad as Disney, which I think... Um, has much bigger problems. Um, and we've talked about this for the entire, probably year, uh, back to when we started seeing that there were 600 scripted shows uh, being produced in English. Uh, not a, not Espanol or, uh, or uh, what is it? Uh, I'm trying to remember my uh, high school German. Uh, but uh, all I can remember is all the Nazi words. Anyway, uh, the... Uh, Zig, not, yeah, Zig Heil, yeah, I'm sorry. I know all the one, uh, words to talk to girls, good-looking girls, and uh, not much in the way of market. Uh, I spent my uh, Ill, ill-spent youth in uh, German class in high school. Okay, uh, anyway, um, there's just, I think, way too much. Uh, somebody in the den said it needs a shake out. I think that's probably the understatement. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? Yeah. Das Mädchen is ein Heiß. I remember that. That is, the girl is hot. I remembered all the, the uh, good ones, but uh, I didn't remember all the other ones. Anyway, uh, we've got uh, a little lighter volume sideways on Disney today, but um, I'm going to say, uh, like a lot of these stocks, you may have a day higher, but it is problematic. Uh, some are trying to recover. Uh, UNG today uh, been beaten down like a redheaded stepchild or a seal on the ice, a baby seal on the ice, to be more specific. So uh, you've got a lot of sideways action. Um, you've got what some people would call uh, an island or an abandoned baby on the top. Uh, but uh, generally... Natural gas really gets going when everything gets getting cold. We've had a little bit of that, but not enough quite yet. Uh, to, 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 anyway, there was a lot of stuff I was thinking of buying, but uh, eh, I'm fairly uh, nonplussed about what we have here. Uh, come on. Yes. M-H, he said. Let's get into the semis real quick and look. Uh, okay, so on the SMHs, we have a nice gap higher. Uh, you could conceivably say this is the second or third gap and maybe a three-gap play. Uh, ideally, uh, the SMHs are just about like the rest of them. And that is you're getting very close to what looks like a place where you'd want to short. 
And on the SMHs, if you're thinking that we're still going southbound in the northbound lane, uh, about uh, 214, 215, there's a double gap. Uh, that first gap comes from the 13th of uh, September down on 4.8 million shares. And again, you got 5 million shares. I think so many people are short that this is an issue. Uh, the other gap, which sits right in the middle of it, uh, up on about 4 million shares, goes back to September 9th. So you had uh, one, two days higher than the next gap down. And it's amazing how many of these double gaps are out here. But if you like single gaps, you're going to love double gaps because they seem to be so prophetic in the market. Certainly 212-ish, uh, maybe 213-ish, but we'll look. Um, the thing is, I would probably wait for a third gap higher, but you do have kind of really two nice gaps, maybe three, depending on how we look at it. Uh, but, man, I would just wish this little gap down here uh, on what are the 14th of October was just a little bit bigger, and I'd call that a three-gap play and right back up to the 212 area. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com, and hopefully we've got those questions answered. We'll go back to the usual suspects. Uh, Tim wants to take a look at Apple. Uh, I think Tim says he's a new A A P L. Says he's a new viewer watcher to the Power Trading Hour. Little gap up here higher. You know the big problem you have with so many of these stocks uh, is that you have huge volume lows that haven't been retested. The October 13th low was 113. You came into it with 141 on November 4th for Apple. So you've got a high volume low. Uh, you also have what I think is kind of the uh, pattern I look for, and that is you get maybe a nice move higher, in this case on the power law vector indicator, 19, and you come down on 24. So you got uh, this is a big stock to have a lot more volume uh, on the downside. Now you're back up, and, you know, so far energy is okay, but it's not what it was on the downside. And you have that high volume low. Uh, that missed the low, previous low, by about 20 cents. So there's a lot of features out here in the Apple chart that would say probably at least, a, at a minimum, a retest of the 134 area on Apple. We'll be back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Peter White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we come back, we'll check we'll back in with the volume uh, to, and uh, pricing. But uh, let's take a quick look. Well, um, certainly have a lot of volume. And you know, let's call it 10.1 uh, billion shares. So it's going to be a big day. We've been looking for something in the 14 to 18 billion share day to say that the trend has changed. Uh, so that would be interesting. Volume's been on the downside and upside has been building for about a week. So we were, I was looking for a wide ranging bar. I thought it might be on the downside, depending on how the numbers came in today. Uh, but uh, certainly you've got volume. So could we be, you know, could we? I, yeah, we could. We could have a bottom into Christmas or something. But uh, we'll have to see. I'm going to wait a couple of days. I think you're still. Uh, probably an air pocket or two to the downside, uh, even if uh, this is a bullish move into the end of the year. Uh, okay, yeah, up 175 points on the S&P Cash 174. Uh, but uh, yeah, you would think that maybe crude or some of this other stuff, gold up 2.5%, I can see that. Uh, with the dollar down, uh, Bitcoin up 405, hardly repairing its uh, issues. Uh, but uh, I didn't even look. I know a lot of people were calling for it to crater overnight. Let's see here, uh, where's the net? Okay, so it looks like. Do we have any? Egg? There it is. Yeah, no, thirteen thousand. I think that's the number everybody had been talking about. I'd heard. So we got down to what is that? Sixteen thousand three hundred. Okay, that's interesting. Let's go back to some other stuff. Anyway, uh, back to the usual suspects. Uh, question about GitLab. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with this company, think about a piece of software that organizes uh, organizes you building software. And every time you make a change, you can what they call check in the changes uh, in uh, a uh, repository that's somewhere else other than your own home for safekeeping. Uh, and other people can do that too. They, you can all work on different stuff. Uh, and if you bust the program up into different modules, everybody can be working on a different module. Now, Microsoft bought GitHub. The technology underneath it is really called Git, G-I-T. And it started off with people just doing this on their local computers. So if they messed something up while they were typing or 
didn't like uh, the road they were going down in and the way they were writing software. It's kind of like writing a book. Eh, maybe you've got to change the names uh, throughout the entire book or something. And uh, maybe you don't like the, the way they cut of the jib of what you're working on now. And you just want to go back and start over from where you were yesterday or the day before. Uh, you can do that. It will save all the changes and put back the software the way it was as you checked it back in. And you can do this uh, module by module, as I said, so you will have different folks. Now, the problem is that Microsoft bought GitHub, which is the big boy on the block. It makes it very tough for these other companies to actually compete. But uh, there's some people that won't use Microsoft. So are they going out of business? No. Um, I, you know, you do have at least a decent test, uh, almost of the previous low. That was 32.12 on May 12th. Um, yeah, could you get a bounce in this? Yes. Am I thinking that there's a lot there? No. It's just like all these other companies that get into the uh, big boys pond. Uh, we talked about Box for a number of years just going sideways, waiting for somebody to buy them out. They don't make any sense by themselves. Uh, probably neither does uh, GitHub uh, or some of those others. So, you know, I think the reason to buy it would be that you hope for a buyout from some bigger company. But saying that means that uh, you reject the reality right now of a lot of companies like Facebook that are laying off huge amounts of folks, uh, otherwise known. Ooh, let's go do this here. Uh, to, to Metamucil, excuse me. Um, now, uh, two days ago, most people don't know because uh, it was lost in the uh, uh, rhubarb of them laying everybody off. Uh, they got the biggest fine from the election. Uh, division of the government that's ever been levied on anybody or any company. I think there's a, a the, there was part of the levy for the company and part of the levy for uh, Zuckerberg himself for violating campaign uh, finance laws. Uh, uh, pretty much for him, 25 million, probably a uh, stub toe, um, but uh, still. A lot of uh, kind of, I've never been high on Meta. Uh, I laughed when they changed their name. And uh, I think uh, I'll just give you a very Sheldonistic, uh, I told you thusly. I informed you thusly. I informed you thusly. Anyway, uh, could things get be getting better? Well, you'll bounce and stuff. I think there's some critical flaws in Meta. And it's hard for me to think much differently. Um, we've talked about these kind of problems that have been around forever. Uh, if you've got a flaw in your business model at the beginning, maybe you can ignore it for a while. But to whether it is something like Tesla, uh, who's always had the same problem, which is expect to make margins that probably no one else is ever going to be able to have. Maybe you get it for a little while. But after a while, those margins become harder and harder to keep unless you're making something like a transistor. But uh, on a car, lots of infrastructure. The bigger you get, the more you have to spend. It just doesn't work out. And everybody else lives with 8% margins. Tesla holding 20, 25% margins. Probably a fool's errand, at least in my opinion. Now we've got another big boy on the block in... EVs with Rivian and it had a nice little gap up after getting beaten down yesterday nice little doji up here uh, today uh, just way too many short sellers uh, in this at the moment um, most of these IPOs are like that not a lot changing okay uh, Oh, anyway, we'll be back in a minute.
If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we uh, come back, get ready to uh, uh, to close up shop, up 178. Uh, I don't think we're probably going to have any kind of big swing, maybe a little bit tomorrow morning. Uh, bond market's closed. I can't say that enough. Lighter volume tomorrow. The old saying, don't be short a quiet market. Well, generally, it's very tough to be short on, a, uh, on the two days that the equity markets are open but the bond markets are closed. Uh, we had one, of course, last month. You can go back and look at that and see the reaction to the markets. But um, you get a lot of people pushing stuff around because the bond market can't really uh, react. Um, and sometimes uh, it's just a snoozer. My guess it, with all the action today is it'll probably be fairly quiet. Now, I don't see any movement in options as of yet. Maybe that comes... Uh, later in the day as we uh, come in here. But uh, all I can say is that uh, you want to be probably on the uh, shorter side of trading and uh, not looking too far down the path. It'll probably take a couple of days uh, to either consolidate these wins and or set up a downside. As I said, a lot of these stocks are bouncing on fairly lighter volume back into gaps higher. They don't instantly turn around most of the time. They do have a little bit of a, 
turnaround period. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But uh, you know what? That's uh, kind of it. We do have a lot of volume, uh, but a lot of times that has not transferred into a lot of volume in the stocks that most of the people are looking for, like the semis. The volume good, better than it has been? Is it any better than the gaps down that we've had? The answer is no, at least so far today. Anyway, uh, we shall uh, persevere and move farther and faster and uh, return once again tomorrow, bright and shiny. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people.